<clears throat> Hi guys, Chris Chu here with the Curbsiders, and I'm here at an ultrasound conference here with Mike Wagner. Mike Wagner, you're also known as what on, on Twitter? Oh, Sono Internist. Sono Internist. And the number one question we've been getting is about billing, and Mike has some very choice words about that. So, billing is the most common question that we get all the time. How do I, how do, I do billing with point-of-care ultrasound? And the answer is, is you can bill as a primary care doc, as a hospitalist, as a non-specialist, you can bill the same billing codes for limited ultrasound exams. And so that's good and that's also bad. The good thing is, is that it's a sustainable way to support your equipment if you're getting a piece of equipment that's like $20,000, $50,000, right? But if your machine costs are relatively low, then you have to be careful because you're really billing the same amount of money as the cardiologists are and the radiologists are. Uh, and if your equipment is only two or five thousand dollars or something to that nature, uh, it's, it's difficult to justify charging essentially a hundred, a hundred fifty dollars per exam that you do. And if you do a chest, abdominal, and cardiac like ultrasound physical like we do, um, and each component is billing anywhere between you know seventy five to a hundred and fifty dollars, well, that becomes very lucrative in terms of a way to support a practice. But that can be a positive but also can be a negative and I think that some people will do ultrasound sort of for the wrong reasons and my big beef with you know the billing side of the equation is is you know it, it puts a, a a financial incentive into a place where you should be mainly doing point of care ultrasound for the benefit of the, the patient so um, I think we should have a we should be received uh, receive compensation for a more comprehensive physical exam because our physical exam is more accurate uh, and also allows us to uh, diagnose and rule out a, a broad range of more conditions than just a traditional physical exam. Um, um, so I think we should be able to bill higher than a traditional physical exam uh, and, and, and in some cases, you know, not have to just go through the wickets of, the, uh, yes, I put my stethoscope on the skin for, you know, this particular problem, even though it's not applicable. Uh, uh, but I need that to do that in order to bill for it or to code for it. Um, but also I think that the, um, the, the way that we get reimbursed should not be the same as you know, a cardiologist who does like, has the full-fledged echocardiography machine, uh, and then they only look at it for pericardial effusion, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem to make sense to bill $150 for that, especially if you're taking care of a underserved patient population, you can't, you can't ethically bill them $150 for something that takes you five, 10 seconds to do, so. Now, Going to a conversation we had earlier, yeah. you know, not to you know keep you too long. I know you have to do stuff. Right. Um, you were saying earlier, and we were talking about how you know talking about you know is ultrasound like taking away from our traditional thoughts of physical exam, like, or is it or is actually making it better? Right. I think I think definitely better. Right. And so the idea is is like well sometimes you know I'll still listen to patients with a stethoscope. I'm not throwing away my stethoscope anytime soon. Sometimes I won't pick up on the patient has a a murmur, say, a significant valvular disease, uh, because I don't have my Doppler box, you know, just in the right position. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't do, you know, multiple different views to kind of assess that valve. But if I've listened to the patient and I've heard they've had a very significant murmur, but then when I look with the Doppler and it goes, oh, you know, like that's not so, that's not so severe. Well, the murmur doesn't match the Doppler findings. And so then I adjust the probe a little bit and then I, then I see sort of like the severe disease, right? It, so it, it helps make Make your echo better if you listen mm -hmm. um, but also your traditional physical exam gets immediate feedback right and so if, if I'm like oh I think you know this person has aortic stenosis and then I look with ultrasound and they have aortic sclerosis well that gives me my immediate feedback so the next time that I listen and I, I, I get that oh, okay this actually sounds like that person who had aortic sclerosis and not stenosis and then you can refine your physical exam skills that way so it, it definitely makes you better physical examiner. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. See you guys.